Howdy guys. All right. So in this video, what I wanted to do um, is cover something that has, a lot of people ask me um, when it comes to developing your own HDA libraries. Um, you know, if you have any experience building HDAs for Houdini, um, that, you know, you can place them into your standard um, OTLs folder, right? So inside of documents. And usually when you are first starting out with the HDAs, a lot of your HDAs will go there, right? But you might want to actually have your own folder with you know certain types of HDAs in one folder and another type of HDAs in another folder, right? And you want them to all be loaded up when you launch Houdini, all right? And that's where the Houdini environment variables come into play, and what I wanted to show in this video, all right? And so um, I already have you know um, a tab menu here with a bunch of um, HDAs already loaded up, and what I want to do is show you, you know, how to get all that stuff to load up uh, when um, you create your own libraries of HDA. So let's walk through this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my documents folder and I'm actually just going to put a folder here at my documents basically. And let's go and make, actually, I'm just going to use this little button up here and we'll just call this indie uh, pixel HDAs like so. All right. And inside of there, we don't have any HDA. So let's go and make one really quick. Just a really simple one. I'll call this a box maker. Uh, because I don't want to spend a bunch of time showing how to build complex HDAs in this video. All right, so now I have a box node inside of there. I'm going to go and right click my geometry node and go to create digital assets. And I'm going to set this up with my namespaces. So I'm going to do IP for IndiePixel, uh, two colons, and then at the end of it, do 1.0 for the version number. All right, and then for the label, I go and do this. No, it's not totally necessary, it's just a style choice. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom, it usually will default to your documents folder, OTLs folder. All right. And that's totally fine. But like I said before, you might want to have your own libraries of HDAs that you pass around. And so your folder is probably not going to be in documents all the time. And so let's save this particular um, HDA into that folder. So I'm going to go to my home folder here and I'm going to look for the IndiePixel HDA folder in here. I can find it. Go to documents. There it is. All right. And I want to save it in that location. Hit accept and then accept. Destroy all spare parameters. And I'm going to put 1.0 for the version here. And then interactive, I'm going to go and set the context. So we put it into indie pixel and forward slash utils. And I'm going to make sure it's an object content context only because it's only at the object level here all right cool so with that all set up let's add a couple parameters uh, just to make it official so i'm going to hide all my default parameters let's dive inside and i'm just going to do alt middle mouse click to um, expose the uniform scale hit apply and accept and there we go so now if i go to uh, indie pixel here up at the obj level you can see i have my uh, i have an old create sphere but I also have the IP box maker. All right. And so this allows me to go and instantiate that, right? If I were to shut down Houdini now, uh, let's discard and quit. Let's do uh, Houdini and I want core 416. The HDA won't actually be loaded up, right? Because the environment variables haven't been set up to look at that specific folder. All right. So I'm going to go and shut down the help there. And you'll notice now, if I go into my utils, I only get the create sphere, which is an old legacy HDA I need to delete. All right, and so how do we go about making sure that we constantly tell Houdini to look into this H IndiePixel HDAs folder? All right, so that is all done inside of our Houdini environment variable. So if we go into our documents, into the version of Houdini that you're using, you'll find this uh, Houdini.env file. All right, so if I were to go and open this, let's open it with uh, code. All right, there we go. And let me hide the, that particular guy there. All right. And what we want to do is we want to set all this stuff up. So we need to access a particular uh, Houdini environment variable, and that's going to be called the Houdini, like so, all caps. Right, and then we want the OTL scan path. All right, we want to set that equal to something. Now you can find out more information about um, all of these paths if you go up to the help documentation, 
and you go to the uh, customization in the Houdini help and go to environment variables and you can go see a list of all the other environment variables that you can set and so we are looking for the Houdini uh, OTL scan path that allows us to basically add on directories that have HDAs that we want to include on launch of Houdini all right so uh, yeah bunch of them in there all right so let's go back here and what I want to do is I want to set this to that path to the folder up here so let's go up one and I'm just gonna get the path so I want to go and get any pixel HDAs there we go all right so I'm just gonna dive inside get the path so just hit the little folder icon there you can type it in too I just saved myself time and I just need to make sure we put uh, forward slashes on these guys like so all right very cool so now we've just set the OTL scan path to this particular folder all right so let's save this and see if that works let's close down Houdini and let's launch it again so I'm going to do core let it launch and you'll notice down in the console what's happening is we can't find any of the other nodes now what I've done is I completely overwritten um, the OTL scan path. So I've told Houdini that only the HDAs that it can load are inside of this folder, which is only one. So, you know, nodes like Mountain 2.0 or Fall Off or, you know, Ripple, Point Wrangle, they can't find any of those. Literally, like, I cannot find any of the other HDAs. And that's not good. So, what we need to do in our scan path over here is we need to put a semicolon and then the AND symbol, like so. All right, let's save that. And then let's shut down Houdini and launch it again. This will make sure basically that it'll just append this particular path onto all the other default OTL folders. All right, so let's go and launch Houdini again. And see if that works. We shouldn't get any errors now or warnings in the console when it launches. Yeah, so we got all of our nodes back, which is awesome. And now if I hit tab, go to any pixel, you can see we have our BoxMaker HDA. How cool is that? So now I've just included that particular folder. And you can do this with any folder now that lives on your system. Maybe it's uh, up on a network drive or a shared drive. All right. Cool way to just pass around your HDAs. All right. And that's what I wanted to show in this video. Thanks so much.